live stream Facebook then I guess you can't get to YouTube. <laughs> Welcome to Abiding Presence for Divine Worship for the second Sunday of the Christian year. We ask that those without liturgical roles silence their microphones. Our celebrant will be Bishop William R. Cavins, who's assisted by Reverend Deacon Christopher Larson. The intention for today's liturgy is for all those seeking racial justice. Our entrance hymn today is number 571, God Who Created Hearts to Love. Oh, my God. 
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. May the peace of God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray, dear friends, that the Lord our God will bless this gift of water, which will be sprinkled upon us to remind us of our baptism. May God help us to remain faithful to the Holy Spirit we have received. Praise be the Lord, the Creator. Praise be the Lord. Praise be the Lord, the resurrection and the life. Praise be the Lord. Praise be the Lord, the Spirit of holiness. Praise be the Lord. Lord God, creator and giver of life, bless this water which we use in faith. Wash away the sins that divide us. Make new life spring up from within us. And lead us whole and complete into your presence to bless your glorious name. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to come forward and bless yourselves with the water. Lord. Almighty and ever present God, your watchful care reaches from end to end and orders all things in such power that even the tensions and tragedies of sin cannot frustrate your loving plans. Help us to embrace your will, give us the strength to follow your call, so that your truth may live in our hearts and reflect peace to those who believe in your love. We ask this in the name of Jesus, the Lord. Amen. We're reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. For Zion's sake, I will not be silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not be quiet until her vindication shines forth like the dawn and her victory like a burning torch. Nations shall behold your vindication and all the kings your glory. You shall be called by a new name pronounced by the mouth of the Lord. 
There shall be a glorious crown in the hand of the Lord, a royal diadem held by your God. No more shall people call you forsaken or your land desolate. You should be called my delight and your land espoused. For the Lord delights in you and makes your land his spouse. As a young man marries a virgin, your builder shall marry you. And as a bridegroom rejoices in his bride, so shall your God rejoice in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, there are different kinds of spiritual gifts for the same spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God produces all of them in everyone. To each individual, the manifestation of the spirit is given for some benefit. To one is given through the, the spirit, the expression of wisdom to another, the expression of knowledge according to the same spirit, to another, faith by the same spirit, to another, gifts of healing by the one spirit, to another, mighty deeds, to another, prophecy, to another, discernment of spirits, to another, varieties of tongues, to another, interpretation of tongues. But one and the same spirit produces all of these, distributing them individually to each person as he wishes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Deacon, may the Lord God be upon your mind, upon your heart, and upon your lips as you worthily proclaim his gospel in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> From the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. 
There was a wedding at Cana in Galilee where the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples were also invited to the wedding. The, the, when the wine ran short, the mother of Jesus said to him, there is no wine. And Jesus said to her, woman, how does your concern affect me? My hour has not yet come. The mother, his mother and sent to the service, do whatever he tells you. Now, there were six stone water jars for their, their for the Jewish ceremonial washings, each holding 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus told them, fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, draw Draw some out now and take it to the head waiter. So they took it. And when the head waiter tasted the water that had become wine without knowing where it came from, although the servers had drawn water new, the head waiter called the bridegroom and said to him, everyone serves a good wine first. And then when the people have drank freely, than the imperial one, but you have kept the good wine to us. Jesus did this in the beginning of his sign to Icana in Galilee. So he in some revealed his glory, and the disciples began to believe in him. My brothers and sisters, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of the gospel wipe our sins away. Oh, weddings, they're so joyful and so stressful at the same time, because normally the head person of the wedding is trying to see if they have enough food, enough everything for their, their guests to be happy and fed and have a good time. I remember my, my brother did his own food catering for his own wedding and we ran out of food and we ran out of drinks. So obviously being the best man, I would replenish everything. And it was kind of stressful, but it worked. But the main point of the story is we have three points I want to talk about. One is authority. Another is belief. And another is gifts, gift, bearing gifts. Jesus had the authority from the beginning to tell people what they should do without telling them sometimes. We recall back when he called his disciples. He didn't say, hey, come with me and I will show you this and this and this and you'll explain the benefits. No, all he said was follow me. And the people got up and followed him. What power is that? So when Mary, who was the mother of Jesus, John, he never mentioned Mary by name, but she knew that he was going to do something. So he said to them, she said to them, do as he says. There was no argument, there was no nothing. Because sometimes if we don't believe something, we would say, well, why do they want to do this? It's not going to work. But they knew that he had that command and say, fill the jars with water, fill this with this, and they did it, step by step, the way he did it. Not knowing what was gonna happen, but had the faith that he knew what he was doing. Then we have the belief part, the faith part, they kind of intertwine. Normally, a mother has 
believe in their child, a mother or father, or both, believe in their child. They believe that they will be do the right thing if taught or, or, or not. My mother always had this model. I believe in you and I trust in you until I can no longer trust you. And so, but even so, the parent would believe in their child uh, while, while they're growing up and as grown up. You know, every time I do something, my dad always said, we can do this, we can do this. And that's the way Mary was with Jesus. She, she believed in him. She believed in everything that was going on. And to believe in the unseen before even seeing it, that's the important thing, to have faith in something. And another one I want to touch on with, with the, the epistle today is gifts. We all have different gifts that God gives us. And of course, Jesus had the gift of miracles, but the miracles had a meaning to it. It was to show that he, was, he had the glory and he did it so we can serve others by a gift that he gives us. We all have that gift. You know, sometimes they go around saying, oh, I don't have the money to give to this person. I don't have, I don't have the wherewithal to do anything. But, you know, sometimes it's the simplest thing that you can do. Like, go and talk to somebody who's lonely or, or volunteer at a shelter or a soup kitchen. I think one of the most beautiful things, and I think I've mentioned it, that one of my most beautiful moments was going to the soup kitchen in Kansas City with um, the Newman group, the Catholic group that I was with in college. And seeing all those people thankful for getting food for that day. And me just serving them in an assembly line was enough to, to satisfy me that I was giving them what they need, needed. It only takes that much. Some people are good at, at writing. Some people are good at speaking. Everybody has a gift and no gift is higher than the other gift. That is what Paul was trying to say to the churches back then. That everybody has a gift to give, gift to give and to contribute that gift. No matter if it's no matter if it's just talking to somebody or writing a whole speech. We are to serve God and his people. And the way to do that is give the knowledge of God either by word of mouth or by doing something that will change their lives. This is what happened during the wedding of Cana. It wasn't just turning water into wine. It was a precursor of what Jesus was going through as well, because he said, my hour has not come yet. But as we, as we take the Eucharist today with changing water into wine and becoming Jesus Christ himself, that is the greatest gift that God has given us. Let us spread that gift of love to one each other and end poverty, end hunger, and end social injustice to the people on this earth. God bless you all.
let us profess our faith by reciting the Apostles' Creed as it's printed in your orders of worship. I believe in God, eternal, almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, the Redeemer of all, the only begotten one, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, lived and loved among us, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, who descended into hell, and on the third day rose from the dead. Jesus, our Savior, ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of loving God, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us come with open hearts to a God, to our God, who provides for us. Our response is, Senor, oyenos, grant our prayer. Senor, oyenos, grant our prayer. For the church that like Mary, we might point the way to Jesus. Lord, we pray, Senor, oyenos, grant our prayer. For the leaders of nations, that in this new year, there will be new determination to deal with global problems, climate change, refugee migrations, poverty, hunger, malnutrition, and the pandemic. Lord, we pray. Senor, oyenos, grant our prayer. For employees, employers who provide safe conditions, pay just wages to their employees, and ensure that people in their employment are treated with dignity and respect. Lord, we pray. Senor, oyenos, grant our prayer. For couples preparing for marriage, that they will cherish one another, learn to listen and seek understanding of one another, that their marriage will be a sacramental sign of God's loving presence in the world. Lord, we pray. Senor, oyenos, grant our prayer. Those welcoming new members of their families through birth or adoption, that God's loving presence will bond them together in true love and concern for each other. Lord, we pray. Senor, oyenos, grant our prayer. For the sick and those in danger of death, especially Father Bob Janini, Tracy Cavins, Bishop Doreen Noble, Dennis Malloy, Stephen Strobel, John Last, Michael Smith, Joan Badonovac. May they be comforted by God's abiding presence. Lord, we pray. Senor, oyenos, grant our prayer. prayer. For those who grieve the loss of loved ones, that they might be at peace with their sorrow, walk with it, be transformed by it, and the light of peace shine with the new intensity on the heart that has carried sorrow. Lord, we pray. Senor, oyenos, grant our prayer. For an end to the COVID-19 pandemic, that the vaccines would seem to prevent major COVID-19 infections and deaths. Lord, we pray. Senor, oyenos, grant our prayer. For ourselves, we will pray for the guidance of the Holy Spirit in our lives and be generous with the gifts we have been given to combat racial injustice. Lord, we pray. Senor, oyenos, grant our prayer. For ourselves, that we are ever more fully instruments of Christ's light and love. For our own needs, for those who need prayer and have no one to pray for them, those who have asked for prayers, especially those who remember now. Lord, we pray. Senor, oyenos, grant, grant our prayer. prayer. God of wonders, at Cana in Galilee, you revealed your glory in Jesus the Christ and summoned all humanity to live in him. Show to your people gathered on this day your transforming power and give us a foretaste of the wine you keep for the age to come. We make our prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your child, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The offertory hymn is number 570, Wherever You Go. Wherever you go, 
shall go Wherever you live So shall I live Your people will be My people And your God And there shall I be buried beside you. We will be together forever, and our love. Pray, brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Creator. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of my hands for the praise and glory of God's name for our good and good of all the church. Creating God, may we celebrate this Eucharist with reverence and love. For when we proclaim the death of the Lord, you continue the work of his redemption, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, holy, almighty, and eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Through the mystery of his cross and resurrection, he freed us from the yoke of sin and death and called us to the glory that has made us a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people set apart to proclaim your mighty works. For you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with the angels and archangels with all the heavenly hosts, we proclaim your glory and join in their unending chorus of praise. Lord
God of power and might, we praise you through your Son, Jesus Christ, who comes in your name. Christ is the word that brings salvation. Christ is the hand that stretches out to sinners. Christ is the way that leads to your peace. God, our creator, we had wandered far from you, but through your Christ, you have brought us back. You gave Jesus up to death so that we might turn again to you and find our way to one another. Therefore, we celebrate the reconciliation Christ has gained for us. We ask you to sanctify these gifts by the power of your spirit as we now fulfill Christ's command. While Jesus was at supper on the night before he died for us, he took bread in his hands and gave you thanks and praise. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. At the end of the meal, he took the cup. Again, he praised you for your goodness, gave the cup to his disciples, and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Great is the mystery of faith. entrusted to us this pledge of his love. We celebrate the memory of Jesus' death and resurrection and bring you the gift he has given us, the sacrifice of reconciliation. Therefore, we ask you, our creator, to accept us together with your Christ. Fill us with your spirit through our sharing in this meal. May you take away all that divides us. May this spirit keep us always in communion with the patriarchs of the East and of the West, with Bill, or with Chris, our presiding bishop, with Bill, our bishop, and with all the bishops, deacons, priests, and all your people. Almighty God, make your church throughout the world a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace. You have gathered us here around the table of your Christ in fellowship with the Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, her chaste spouse, and all the saints. In that new world where the fullness of your peace will be revealed, gather people of every race, language, and way of life to share in the one eternal banquet with Jesus Christ, the Lord. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, almighty creator, forever and ever.
in unity. Let us pray as Jesus himself taught us to pray. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Lord, thy kingdom come. come. Thy will, will be done, be done on earth, earth as it is, is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and, and forgive us our trespasses as, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us forth from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from all sin and anxieties. We wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, my peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Will it give each other some sign of God's peace? Peace be with you, Deacon. Peace be with you, Jesus. Peace, peace be with all of you at home. This is Jesus, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to his supper. Lord, as I take communion, I recommit my life, my heart, my thoughts, my everything to you. Our act of spiritual communion for those of you that cannot receive today. Jesus, I believe you are always present in the Eucharist. I love you with my whole heart. I want you to be always in my soul. Be with me in spirit, though I cannot now receive communion. Keep me close to you today and always, as you promised. Amen. Amen. The table is prepared. Come, eat, and drink. Our communion hymn is number 572, Where Love is Found. Thank you. 
Hymn of Thanksgiving is number 840, Lord, whose love in humble service.
and let us pray. Lord, you have nourished us with bread from heaven. Fill us with your spirit and make us one in peace and love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We ask you to be sure to take a look at our bulletin this week. It is posted on abidingpresenceministries.com, our church website. I started out writing a note about racism this week. And those of you that are registered with us, we emailed that to you um, because it turned into a rather long pastoral letter. So I, I do reference that to you. You can find a link to my blog, One Catholic Voice, uh, on the church website under links uh, so that you can read that if you did not receive it in your email box. I thank the deacon for his homily and his thoughts today. We uh, encourage you to, those of you that belong to our parish, to come back this evening at 6.30. Uh, we will send out a link for the meeting, but we're having a parish meeting, continuing the meeting we started in um, is that December or November. It's been a while, but we wanted to take one or two months to consider the things we talked about. And we will be going forth this evening with trying to develop further plans for our parish, as well as electing a lay representative to the board of directors. Um, so 6.30 this evening. And I look forward to seeing you all next Sunday. The Lord be with you. Also with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. We're going to go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn is number 368 Songs of Thankfulness and Praise. <laughs> Thank you.